Hello friends, this is Grief speaking. I recently made a video covering some of the most disturbing mangas ever made, and people often ask me what my favorite manga off the list is. Well, there's a few, but undoubtedly one of my favorites, and a manga that actually affected me, is Parasite. The reason why is that this story actually made me think about what being human really means. Yeah, it's cheesy, and I'll explain, but first let me start by giving you an overview of the story so you understand what Parasite is. Parasite is a sort of alien invasion story, although a little less Independence Day and a little more Invasion of the Body Snatchers. These parasitic entities infiltrate human hosts, commandeering their brains and reshaping their bodies into weapons optimized for hunting and survival. Well, it doesn't sound too bad, except that they primarily feed on human flesh. So naturally, after the invasion, there are mass numbers of murders cropping up around Japan, and they all involve the body being severely mutilated. This leads to some hysteria as the death count rises. Eventually, the general public becomes aware of the fact that the monsters take human form, and this leads to general paranoia. How do you know who's a monster? It could be a stranger on the street, or even a close relative or friend. They even develop a strange way of checking if someone is a parasite by plucking a hair from their head. You know what? I'm getting ahead of myself here. I haven't even gotten to Migi and Shinichi. Shinichi is a typical high school kid, and while sleeping one night, a parasite side attempts to enter his body, but as Shinichi has headphones in, it can't crawl through his ear to control the brain. Instead, as its lifespan is limited, it burrows into his right hand. This leads to the birth of Migi. Because Migi was unable to possess Shinichi's brain, and therefore his entire body, he instead can only control his right hand, which is actually how Migi got his name, as Migi is the Japanese word for right. This gives Shinichi an unusual position. He retains his human consciousness and emotions, but is bound to a creature who has complete control of his right arm. This also puts Shinichi Shinichi and Migi in danger, as the parasites can sense the location of other parasites. When they find that Migi is not in control of his host's brain, they consider him dangerous, and at the same time, Shinichi feels a sense of responsibility to try and fight the creatures, which is no easy feat. The parasites can shapeshift in any way they see fit, usually by making a web of razor-sharp instruments from their bodies. Because Migi only has control of one arm, he is limited, making Shinichi a vulnerable target. Although this first seems like a disadvantage, it eventually becomes a strength. In a critical moment, when Shinichi is about to die, Migi merges with his heart in order to keep him alive. Because of this strange process, Shinichi begins to gain superhuman speed and strength, making him a much more formidable opponent. He also begins to become more like Migi, which leads us to what I found most compelling about the series. The parasites, including Migi, are purely rational creatures. Their priority is to survive, and they don't care about anything else. They don't really care at all. This is an often comical conflict between Shinichi and Migi, because Migi's strategies usually show no concern for human life, and the only reason he protects Shinichi is because if his host dies, so would he. As they coexist, and especially after Miki fuses with Shinichi's heart, Shinichi begins not to just change physically, but emotionally. While he's not a completely cold reptile, he begins to view the world similarly to how the parasites do. Sharing his body with a creature that acts purely on rational thought starts to affect his own behavior. As Miki's logical influence grows, Shinichi's human emotional responses begin to fade. This shift culminates in a really unsettling scene where Shinichi, upon discovering a dead puppy in the road, nonchalantly discards it into a trash can. His girlfriend's shock at the heartless action prompts an argument between the two, and it's clear Shinichi wouldn't have given it another thought. He explains that this was no longer a living creature and simply biological waste, and the thing is, he's right. Obviously this seems completely inhumane, but there's no real logical reason to bury the body. That's just tradition. And on a practical level, it won't make a difference whether this dog body is in the ground or in a trash can, but it just seems wrong, and this conversation I think taps into the human condition, and in particular encapsulates what really resonates with me about the story. I find myself oftentimes disregarding social conventions in favor of more rational thinking. If it doesn't serve an obvious purpose, it must be inefficient, or so the rational part of my brain tells me. Maybe not to the extent of casually trashing the corpse of a puppy, but that inhuman sentiment bubbles up nonetheless. Some people go too far the other way, getting so caught up in emotion that they have trouble solving problems or moving forward effectively. This grapple with the balance between logic and emotion is captured perfectly with Migi and Shinichi. While it's easy to label Migi as heartless, his perspective on the lifeless puppy is undeniably logical. The dog is no longer a sentient being, it's merely organic material. This viewpoint forced me to question my own response. Why am I relating to the ruthless creature in this story and not the human? In this way, I think Parasite prompted me to introspect on what defines humanity. Is it our capacity 
capacity for logical thought, or is it our ability to feel and empathize? Shinichi and Migi's relationship is an exceptional example of this push and pull. Without emotion, life becomes mechanical and devoid of connections. Conversely, without logic, we would be slaves to our impulses, unable to construct a functioning society. Maybe I'm digging too deep or reading too much into a manga about shape-shifting creatures that eat humans, but in some ways I think that's what a good story does. It reflects inner conflict back at you and helps you understand yourself better.